U.S. Guided Blood Patch Delivery During Liver Biopsy, Nature's Gel Foam. These are the author's disclosures. Here are the keywords for this video. EUS guided liver biopsy is emerging as an alternative technique to percutaneous liver biopsy. Post liver biopsy hemorrhage is a feared complication with limited treatment options. We describe a technique that may prevent post liver biopsy hemorrhage by stopping blood flow within the biopsy tract. EUS liver biopsy is performed using a 19 gauge FNB needle. A one pass three actuations technique is used to obtain a liver specimen. E-flow color Doppler is used to identify potential flow within the liver biopsy tract. If persistent flow is seen within the biopsy tract after 2-3 to three minutes, 25% of the needle contents are pushed back into the tract using the needle stylet. This blood patch may act as a mechanical barrier to facilitate hemostasis. This is the E-flow button on the EUS processor that is used to identify flow of blood during liver biopsy. This is a simple technique that may prevent post-liver biopsy hemorrhage, yet maintaining an adequate liver specimen for pathologic diagnosis. Case number one is a 52-year-old female with a past medical history of diabetes, obesity, and elevated liver enzymes. Her blood work was concerning for autoimmune hepatitis, therefore she was referred for EUS liver biopsy. We perform EUS liver biopsy with a 19 gauge needle. With this particular needle, we perform one pass with three actuations. Here's actuation number one. Actuation number two. And actuation number three. After final actuation, eFlow Doppler shows persistent flow within the biopsy tract, which was not seen prior to liver biopsy. We then wait two to three minutes for spontaneous hemostasis. In this case, flow persists, therefore the blood patch technique is used to facilitate hemostasis. As the stylet is inserted into the needle, we can see hypoechoic material enter the biopsy tract, resulting in cessation of flow toward the needle. E-flow confirms cessation of active flow towards our needle, therefore it is safe to remove the needle from the liver. Finally, we can still see active flow within our biopsy tract. However, the blood patch is preventing flow towards the needle as it is removed from the liver. It is now safe to remove the needle from the liver. This is our liver specimen. A total of 5 centimeters of liver core was obtained. The single pass technique is quite adequate for pathologic diagnosis. In this case, we were able to obtain 10 complete portal tracts. The final cl clinical and pathologic diagnosis was idiopathic non serotic portal hypertension. Case number two is a 65 year old male with a 16 year history of elevated liver enzymes. His serologies were suggestive of autoimmune hepatitis, therefore, he was referred for EUS liver biopsy. Here, we use a 19 gauge needle to perform the liver biopsy with one pass and three actuations. Here's actuation number one.
Actuation number two. And actuation number three. Following final actuation, eFlow Doppler is used to identify bleeding within the biopsy tract. In this case, we can see active flow within the needle biopsy tract, which we couldn't see prior to liver biopsy. At this point, we do not withdraw the needle further and wait two to three minutes for spontaneous hemostasis. If flow persists within our liver biopsy tract, we perform salvage with blood patch technique. We introduce the stylet into the needle and deliver the distal 25% of the needle contents, which include mostly clotted blood. The hypoechoic material seen here represents our blood patch. The technique works successfully and flow no longer follows our needle as it is withdrawn from the liver. The final step is to remove the needle and we can see no active flow. E-flow confirms that the blood is no longer flowing towards our needle and it is safe to remove the needle from the liver. One centimeter of core sample was obtained with at least five portal tracks for review, which was determined to be adequate for diagnosis. There was no significant steatosis or autoimmune hepatitis related changes seen on the sample. Periportal to bridging fibrosis was present and a stage of two to three out of four was seen. Post-liver biopsy bleeding is a known complication following liver biopsy. Currently, there are no endoscopic interventions available to prevent post-liver biopsy bleeding. We describe a technique where a blood patch is delivered into the biopsy tract in order to facilitate hemostasis and potentially prevent post-liver biopsy hemorrhage. After utilizing blood patch technique, the remaining needle content should be grossly examined to determine adequacy of liver specimen. Additional passes may not be necessary. While this is conceptually a novel approach to hemostasis, a larger randomized control study would be necessary to confirm our hypothesis.